Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio. Man, I haven't played the game in quite a few days so I'm really excited. Especially since we got our power problems under control in the previous episode using this nuclear power setup. Of course there's much room for improvement, however if we check out our power situation we can see we are producing more than enough at the moment so that we can finish the last contraption which is what we need in order to get started with the rocket program. Now, where were we? We are already producing the rocket fuel as well as the low density structures. We're not quite producing the rocket control units just yet. For that we need the processing units as well as the speed modules. And what did I want to make here? I have absolutely no idea. Probably the satellites. Well, let's get started with what we already know. Red circuits need to be produced here and blue circuits over there. What do we need for red circuits? Just some more copper cables. We already have access to the plastic here. I think this is going to be more complicated than I first anticipated because we also need access to solar panels and accumulators. Generally, I think what we have to do is we have to double this setup. So what if I did something like this and kind of mirrored it on the other side? We would be bringing out the circuits on top of a single belt, which can then continue into several directions. All we have to do is bring in some iron in order to feed these machines, and then the copper is going to come from the other machines here. So we do a split here, another split there, and we can simply connect this. Should be good. I will upgrade the belts after we've built the contraption. I think I have to move everything a little bit to the right in order to make sure the beacons can actually reach the electronic circuit machinery and this would allow me to connect at least six beacons to each of these machines. Okay, that's not too shabby. I'm really not so sure about the setup. We'll have to see if we can make something out of it. I'm gonna feed it with the appropriate modules already. Productivity here and then whole bunch of speed and we just want to know how fast this is. I actually had enough modules. This is surprising. Okay, per minute. No, per second, please. Ooh. 25, that doesn't sound right. Hold the phone. Looks like I only need 1000 per minute, so we should be fine. Very nice, I take that. We can do some adjustments later on. Now, how exactly are we gonna get this into the machine here? That could be a problem, or it doesn't need to be, since now we might be too quick and we don't actually need those extra beacons there. Okay, now the last thing we need is a little bit of copper for these guys here. You also get some stack inserters, wonderful. And we do the same thing here on the other side. So split that off right here, you go over yonder and the rest of you comes down south with me, joining up this line. Good, now we wanna use those electronic circuits to go into two directions actually. One is probably gonna go up and then the other one I would like to bring down. We would then be moving over here to the machine that produces the red circuits. We already have plastic and electronic circuits and I believe the copper should be easy enough. I mean the easiest would be to just take the copper cables from here, bring them out to the other machine. However, let's check how many spare we have. 22 per second spare and we need a whole bunch here. Actually looking at this, we are getting away with it. We only need 4.8 for the red circuits. That means I'm gonna grab the copper cables from here, move them over and they're gonna be imported into this machine. Wonderful. Actually, we don't need the good inserters for this one. We then need to get the red circuits out of there and into the next machine. Red circuits, I believe we only need for... Oh, actually we also need them for the speed modules. But yeah, we definitely need them here for the blue circuits a look at this, we might not even have to split this. We can just go straight down here and then we actually come up and surf this machine as well. So that would be red circuits and blue circuits. I'm also going to reroute the iron line here. We can just hop over, I guess, and then hop over again. Now let me do this with red belts so we can hop a little bit further. Mm, let's see, that's not really working. I would have to move this slightly out of the way, for instance here. Then we make a little bit of space. I hop over there. We come along here and go up again. That should be good now. Now what we could do is actually take the red circuits and combine them with the green circuits at this point. I think I'm gonna move this inserter over. 
This is going to allow me to use it for the blue circuits here. And then we also have the space to bring in some sulfuric acid, which I'm going to do right now. Give me a second. All right, said and done, we now have access to sulfuric acid. My suggestion would be to just continue this. Let's see where we want to bring this. You can see I'm already extracting the blue circuits out of here in order to be able to feed them to these machines right there. But as of this point, we want to continue even further and we're going to go along here, move up and actually join the line right there. And this is going to give us the perfect distribution for all the materials we need to actually build the satellite. Now we're only missing solar panels, accumulators and radars, all of which should be fairly easy with materials we don't necessarily have to produce here. Whatever we do produce here, however, such as the green and red circuits we do want to make use of. Right here we will be building the speed modules, so maybe we bring this up here, make a little loop-de-loop -loop, and then go across there. Bring this up to the machine. Wonderful. We then need to bring the speed modules back to these machines. Is this going to be easy or possible? Let's see. Uh, hold the phone. I need to do this here. And then there's probably no reasonable way to extract this. So maybe we should move the machine down a little bit. We could add it right there. This would still allow us to import the materials easily. And we can then do something like this. Is this actually... Yeah, look at this. This is all still beaconed up here. We can have one go into this direction, hop over, import into the machine, one going down. Uh, this hopping over is going to be more difficult. What we can do, though, is move this line over to the right side here. And then we get the opportunity to move across like so which is going to allow us to do something like this and that. And therefore, we now also have access to the speed modules. On the other side, we just take a red underground belt and we also have access to the materials there. We already know where we want to extract them towards the top. Let's maybe also productivity module these up. Wonderful. We are basically done. We just need solar panels, accumulators and radars. Hold the phone. Did I forget about the rocket silo? We needed, yeah, all those materials. So we do have enough stuff. Now, it looks as though we don't actually need any beacons or modules for this one, which is a good thing. So if we just go with the best machinery, we should be doing fine. We need to bring along batteries. We already have the electronic circuits. We need to bring along steel. Wait, I'm already producing the steel. Totally forgot about that. Yeah, we have access to steel here. Oh, man. Yeah, looks like it's not going to be the most structured thing I've ever built in this game. But you know, it's still part of the starter base. And as long as it fulfills its purpose, I'm happy. Let's just do some more brainstorming here. For instance, right here, I would like to build the satellites, right? We need some normal and long-handed inserters here. We then want to go ahead and make sure we actually have the space for our rocket silo. So I probably want this right there. And we'll have to move a few things. Yeah, this should be fairly good, though. I... <sighs> no, no! <laughs> I totally forgot that I need another line for my science packs. <laughs> you gotta be absolutely kidding me, man. Oh man, we're so screwed. I cannot move everything one block down. It's gonna mess with so many things. On the other side, we have no choice, right? Oh, this is so horrible. Wait, before I do that, let me make a save game. Just in case I'm gonna regret the ever-living hell out of this. And we wanna move everything one block down. Just like that. And then let my robots take care of it. Because it's gonna be a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little break until this is done. See you in a bit. Well, there we go. Everything has been moved down one block. I hope it is still working. Let's now see what we need to do next. This would be the satellites. Where do we have those? Hold on a moment. Where is the satellite located? I thought it was next to the rocket site. Did I not unlock that? Yeah, will you look at that? Space science pack. We actually have to research that thing first. Oh, well, it's just 2000 science packs and we have some backup. Yeah, look at that. We might get into trouble with the yellow science packs. However, I might be able to counteract that. No, actually, we won't get into trouble. I totally forgot that I already beaconed everything up. And the modules are in there too. Yeah, already at 7%. This shouldn't take too long. In this case, I'm gonna grab myself the materials to build a rocket silo. Man, I could swear I've already done this, but maybe I'm thinking of a different playthrough. So first things first, we want to grab a whole bunch of concrete. I'm also gonna borrow a little bit of steel wherever I can. And then we want the engine units. 
we should be able to grab them from... Ah, I remember. That's why I didn't do it. Because I first have to... Oh, no. <laughs> We need 200 electric engine units. That is a little bit unfortunate. The processing units are going to be comparably easy. By the way, another upgrade that I did is I finally got a portable fusion reactor. It's not that hard to build. I just had to unlock it. And I also upgraded my personal RoboPort. So now with only one RoboPort, I can have 25 robots. And the portable fusion reactor should keep everything up. Obviously, we want to upgrade to Mark II armor as soon as possible so we can have multiple fusion reactors and also support multiple roboports. So I think just for a brief moment, I'm gonna copy over this machine here and within a wooden chest, I'm now going to collect the engine units. In the meantime, we should get enough pipes as well as processing units. Uh, let me grab some more of these. Thank you. I'm just gonna go through my various machines collecting some of the circuits that I need. Okay, wonderful. Now we're only missing the electric engine units, everything else I have at my disposal. And then we need to re-enable this machine because obviously we need those to actually do the proper research. Alrighty, put everything back the way it was before. We have enough materials to build that silo, so we're gonna do that right away. The next thing I actually did is I rebounded the batteries. So right now we have the batteries, I split them up here, and they are actually going all the way down. Oop, as you can see here, I'm bringing them over to this place here at the bottom, and I thought here we can actually build the accumulators. For instance, we only need the iron there and the batteries that I've already brought. So that should be pretty straightforward. We can then bring out the accumulators at this point. Next up, solar panels, copper plates, steel plates and electronic circuits. I figured the steel plates we can actually bring out like this. Let me build a couple of belts. So I'm filtering out the steel using a splitter and it's gonna go into this direction. Now the difficult part is gonna be to bring the solar panels and the accumulators together with the radar to actually also feed into this machine. We already have the other ingredients. Oh my gosh, I think this is gonna be an absolute mess. Maybe I can move things a little bit further away here so I have more space and can get access to the green circuits. So we wanna filter out green circuits on the left side, that should be fine. Hmm, I wonder if I can just hop over here, maybe move up. Gonna set up a little something like this and we can bring the steel together with the electronic circuits. It doesn't actually need to go up, we already have all the ingredients we need right there. So what if we did a little something like this with a long-handed inserter here to get the copper and we bring out the material like so and bring this up. Yes, okay, that's gonna work. Again, it's not the most elegant thing that I've ever built, but it's gonna make it possible to combine accumulators and solar panels on one belt. So that would be solar panels and we should be good with that. Just give it some power. Looks like I'm gonna need a little bit of a faster inserter here. But there we go. We're crafting it. Let's see if we have enough time with the fast inserter. Yeah, look at that. We can continuously craft. And now solar panels and accumulators are meeting together in order to input into this machine. I gotta be careful how we handle this. We probably should go over here first. Now, we just have one problem. We need to bring copper back here in order to feed these machines. And that is gonna be a pain in the butt. Or maybe not. Maybe we can continue here. Oh, actually, this is perfect. All we have to do is that and that. No, it's not quite enough. <laughs> in this case, we need to move up first. And then we can hop over here. And now, instead of going down, this line just needs to go up. Wonderful. Yeah, there we go. This is gonna work out. We now get the copper again and we don't have to move the rocket silo. The last thing we need is a radar with arm plates, gears and electronic circuits. Honestly, I think the biggest issue are gonna be the gears and they are actually no issue whatsoever. I just have to grab some iron first. So let's say we split off the iron right there. Everything else can continue normally. We bring this into the machine, we extract it, and then it's gonna go up, join this belt right there. So it's gonna go on the left side of the belt and it's just gonna stop at this point. We let it continue. I think I also wanna make a slight change here. So instead of leading the steel through there, we are now gonna hop over here. 
still achieve the same result if I uh, swap this. And we should have more space to do what we want. We want to import the gears as well as the circuits. So this is going to craft the radar and all we need are the arm plates. <sighs> okay, maybe I should have left a little bit more space for this contraption. I just wanted it to niftily fit into the space we had left over. So some of the solutions today might not be that satisfying. Technically, we could move this guy over, have another inserter here. And if I manage to bring some iron there, then we could also import that. Now, in order to do that, I need at least a little bit of space here. We are going to continue the iron line. Why not go here and there? We then want to hop over here using a red underground belt. And with the yellow one, we're going to hop over there. And now we actually have all the ingredients we require. Let's maybe get a faster inserter here. Wonderful. Oh my gosh, this is actually working. And then it can be directly ported over into this machine together with all the other ingredients. And now I'm going to get into a pickle again because on the one side we want to import the control units, density structures and the rocket fuel. So we need all of these lines. But on the other side, we need to bring these two components over to this machine. Ah. We will then launch a rocket and then we want to extract the science packs. So we also have to think about that. They are probably going to go into this direction. And one line needs to go like so. The other line needs to go up. Or we can also have them here. Man, this game is so freaking awesome. There's just always a solution. So we are bringing solar panels and accumulators with an underground belt over here in order to import into this machine. I then took the two upper belts we need to import into the rocket silo. One is ending right here. So we can add a stack inserter probably to get those things in there. And then you can see I took a red underground belt to take the second line and bring it up here as well. And because the rocket silo is so big, this is actually not a problem. And we can also power it up easily. Now, we are already feeding the materials, which is not good. Wait, 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 wait. I need to import the modules here. We want to waste as few materials as possible, of course. This is going to make the rocket silo considerably slower. However, our goal is to produce one science pack per second, which means we can be a little bit slower. This just needs to accommodate the rate of our starting base. You can see I started to set up all the modules at the moment. We don't quite have enough, but I just want to see this running. I want to get our first rocket launch today. And I'm just happy we actually managed to smush everything into this little corner. So we're 94% done in researching the science pack. After that, we can get things started. Oh my gosh, this is going to be exciting. How far are we in here? 14%. So good thing we got things started. We can also see at the moment iron isn't the greatest. We might have to improve on our iron production soon. But yeah, first and foremost, I want a bunch of modules. So please, robots, bring those to me. Do we only have like three robots in the system? I might have picked up the other robots. Yeah, there we go. Please, come on. Hurry up a little bit. So that is another 50 modules. I'm actually going to grab everything we have. And then all we want to do is beacon up everything. But look at that. The modules just disappear so quickly. There we go. Seems like this is all we can do for the time being. Now we might want to take care of the arm problem. This needs to be a full arm belt, which we actually do have. But it seems as though we are using up more than one of those. So one thing we could do is add another smelting system. We could add it right here on the top and kind of keep supplying all the lines. But then which vein would we take and would we do that with some more trains? I guess it's not important for today's episode. I can think about that another time. What is important is that we get this to launch today. Space science pack finished. Hooray. I still need to improve my smelting here. Ah, okay. So that is the problem. Not fast enough inserters. That is much better. Continuous smelting. Okay, wonderful. Anyways, let's set this up. This is going to be the satellite recipe. And we should have all the things available. Looks like we need a crazy amount of solar panels. So we also had to import that quicker. Or actually accumulators. Holy cow, how many do you even need? Yeah, probably 100. And also 100 solar panels, right? 
yeah, check this out. This is just absolute insanity. <laughs> but yeah, we have enough rocket fuel. We're just waiting for the low density structures, which at the moment are still a little bit slow. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rob the beacons here at the bottom. And instead, we want to add them to the top here where they are at the moment more important. The next thing we definitely have to make faster are the belts here. They all need to be upgraded. Oh my gosh, look at that. We are absolutely missing the iron. Yeah, I will have to fix that. But today, it's just about getting that first rocket launched and then we'll have to fix the iron the next time. I believe one thing we might be able to do is just copy over a train. You know, get two trains going, at least for our current vein, which at the moment is still not completely satisfied. You can see it kind of stops at this point and then the new train is slowly incoming, but it's not quite there yet. As a matter of fact, it is now on its merry way. And if we copy over the settings, uh, let me just wait for it. There it is. I want to copy over the settings of this train. Then we paste it into this train. So that's all good. We set this to auto and give this just a little bit of initial fuel. There we go. Now we have two trains going for the iron and the first one, I think it should wait here, but we might get into slight troubles sometimes. We'll have to see. You know what? I think this is even going to work because the trains are just waiting here. But it is definitely not a good or permanent solution. So we have our first iron train here and the second one is following. Let's see if they actually collide or something. Uh, that is not the spot I want you to wait at, honestly. Yeah, we need to add another one of these signals. Oh, oh, stop, stop. Okay, okay. We need to add another signal. We could do it, for instance, here. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. And that should theoretically allow the train to move one more towards... Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I wanted to see. We still have 7.9 million left in this deposit. That is not too shabby. Maybe let me grab the miners that are already empty. There could be one problem with this intersection. We might have to make a bypass for the trains to cross each other. But there we go. The rocket is at the 50% at the moment and we already loaded a satellite that we can bring over using a long-handed inserter. And that should be everything, right? Did we... wait. Is the satellite in there? I guess we can get it in there as soon as the rocket is actually done. So give me a brief moment and I'm gonna be right back. Alrighty, we are actually almost done. I also had to upgrade one of the copper lines, but this is a good indication that we are finally using up everything. You can see the iron has been recovering a little bit, but that also has to do with the fact that we're not researching at the moment. Anyhow, we are at 99%, which means in just one go, we should be able to launch the rocket. Now, what I'm missing mostly are the speed modules because I did not read the blueprint correctly. We actually needed way more than that, or at least we needed more assembling machines. So I put some speed modules in here. Also, some of the beacons are touching it, but at the moment, this is our bottleneck. Even more pressing are the red circuits. But we still have a bunch of beacons not filled up with the red circuit, so that might have something to do with it. Actually, let me try that. We're just gonna fill up those beacons instead, and now we're missing the plastic bar, which... Uh, why is that? Of course, the plastic bars should also be beaconed up, so that might have something to do with it. Yeah, look at that. Now they can be much faster. But anyhow, everything should resolve itself once I can beacon everything up properly. And we also import the right amount of copper and iron. Anyhow, you can see the rocket is finished and... What? No. Processing units? That's not what I wanted in here. Ah, okay. It, it worked out. I'm not sure what happened there. But we now finally got the satellite in here. So we are gonna launch the rocket. And we are actually gonna finish the game for the first time here in this playthrough. Now, I did take my sweet time to get to this point. So it's not gonna be a speedrunning record, but check out the beauty of this animation. It's just always such a great thing. And hooray, we are done. 34 hours played, holy cow. That was definitely the longest I took to finish this game so far. We also did not kill a whole bunch of biters. Might have something to do with my settings. We uh, killed even more trees than biters at this point. I totally forgot we want to extract them. Yeah, I think what we have to do is upgrade this part. Let's see, we can just... Yeah, we need stack inserters for those. So just one stack inserter is gonna go here. And then I wanna use a red underground belt to go there. 
Okay. Uh, woo -woo -woo -woo. What happened there? Ah, crap. It's not possible. Unless we use a yellow one here. Okay, then it's gonna be possible. <laughs> However, they're now landing all on this side and obviously I would like them to split up. And I think one way we might be able to achieve that is by switching the lines. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. So we're gonna switch this line downstairs. Gonna pick up everything from here. As a matter of fact, we also want to pick up the white signs. I'm gonna bring everything back into the laboratory. Oh man, we have so much rocket fuel. Can I put that in here? Thank you. And now we can bring the science packs here and we can split it up there and we can do this, that, that and hop over here. That This is definitely the most complicated contraption I've ever built, but we're freaking doing it. Now I only need a whole bunch of long-handed inserters and we will be able to do the research. Of course, this is only going to be important for the first few sciences, such as those that require only 500 and maybe a thousand. And later on, it's just going to get crazier and crazier where we need hundreds of thousands of science packs. And of course, this is where the mega base is going to come in. So let's just go ahead and actually wrap this up. Give every lab a long-handed inserter as well. And there it is, the starter base basically completed. Let's maybe move up, get the rest of the speed modules going. As a matter of fact, we actually don't have enough of them, so we will have to wait for that for the next episode. But other than that, I'm pretty happy. And now our next step would be to start a mega base somewhere else. So I'm assuming I would start with a nuclear power setup somewhere, now that I better know how it works. And we will have to think about how we structured the mega base exactly. Maybe one more thing before we wrap this up is we can have a look at the production of everything. How much did we actually build? We made over 1.2 million circuits. We extracted over 3 million iron ore, 4 million copper cables. It's actually not quite as much as I anticipated. But yeah, I just wanted to let you know where we are at at the moment because once we start comparing all of these numbers, it's gonna go crazier and crazier. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.